good morning and welcome back to Visit File Course. You can see I am still alive. <laughs> I will get I will get back to making videos soon, I promise. It's Thursday the 26th of October today and I have to say it's a bit of a grey morning. It's quite nippy and as you can see by my umbrella, it's drizzling. It's that right fine stuff that soddens you. So this is going to be a quick do. Fortunately, I had the presence of mind to do a little film the other day when uh, when they were working on the beach because once again the tides in look but you can see that they've made cracking progress so we're going to go and have a look and we're going to go and see what's happening on the seafront at Cleveland with the wire beach management scheme so don't forget make sure that you've subscribed I promise I'm going to get back to doing videos again Make sure you've subscribed, make sure you've hit the little bell for notifications and don't forget to sign up for your Visit File Coast email newsletter. Let's go and see what we can see. Well, for a kickoff, I think I should have put some gloves on. I think I should have put some gloves on. Now then, there's been a lot of conversation on Facebook about how this job has ruined this beach and it looks a mess and da da da. It's not finished. This is merely a little bit of a work in progress. I will explain more as we go around the corner. So, as you can see, the lovely new revetment units are neatly in place. Don't they look posh? <coughs> Don't they look posh wash? So they go from here, from that block, right down to the five bar gates. So those square blocks make the ends up where the um, gateways are. So I'm going to go around there and have a look and see what they're doing. So there I was prattling away to myself as I walked down the as I walked down the path and I've not pressed record. Well, wouldn't you know? First thing Thursday morning. Anyway, as you can see here, we have big piles of tarmac and big piles of muck. And these two young men down here are getting ready for putting the tarmac in the gap between the new little wall and the existing footpath. And I've got to say, I've kept hearing the jackhammer going and my curiosity's been killing me. I kept wondering what they were doing. And apparently they are cutting a wider channel out so that they can get the wacker plate into the gap here. Where's my finger gone? Where's my finger? I've lost my finger. Into the gap there between the wall and the existing tarmac. So that makes sense. That makes sense. I must say I've kept wondering what they were doing. And then these sacks are bags of concrete grout, which they're going to use to fill the gaps between the actual blocks themselves and the base that they're standing on. So, <coughs> so they run that in as a liquid and it fills all the cracks and crevices and all the little spaces in between the old sea wall, the new sea wall and the tarmac. So that's, that's what they do, that's how they fill the gaps in and make sure nothing moves. And as you can see, it's been, it's been a builder's compound. It's been a builder's compound while they've been working. And this little wall goes right the way up to the five bar gate and looks very nice. The information boards are still in the back of it, look, which look rather, rather nice and easy to read. I have to say that's very smart. So there's lots of, lots of clutter to tidy up. And then when they've done that, put the tarmac in, done the grout in, eventually they'll get the road open again. Goodness me, that barrier's had a wallop, hasn't it? Either that or it's been, it's been out for a night on the tiles and it's still a bit drunk. So this is the tarmac, well some of the tarmac that they cut out of the footpath to drop the wall in. And this pile of muck is some of the concrete and some of the underlayer that they dug out when they made that long tidy channel to drop it in. So look at that, you can see all the different layers of road surface, it's like time team. There's old concrete, old, well, I wonder what that green is. I can't remember having a green footpath. 
It's obviously been green at some point, isn't it? Well, well, well. I wonder if the old footpath used to be green underneath all that, all that dirt and algae. Must have. In fact, look at that. There's umpteen layers. That's really interesting. Anyway, I digress. We're not doing archaeology for beginners. So this is all going to go away and be recycled. So they, they send it off and it gets crushed up and used for fill underneath other building projects. And some man's carrying on doing his straight line. The other one's assisting him. And I'm going to go down here now and see what's happening on the beach. It's not quite seasons of Mr. Mellow fruitfulness, is it? As our friend Keats said. I'm going to stand on here and try not to fall off. Anyway, been lots of conversation on, on Facebook about whether or not this beach looks the best. So you can remember that all these rocks were filled and covered to cover all of them quite high up to the sea wall. And we've had some rare windy weather and it's washed it all out. Now, personally, I think it looks, I think it looks quite nice like that. And I've, I've got to say, I find it a lot more interesting. But that's just my opinion, you might not agree. It's not finished. So when the groins are finished, and when the <coughs> beach is lifted, it will all tie in together to lift the beach level. So the sand and the shingle will accumulate pretty much to cover these rocks pretty much most of the time but you can see that it's protected the sea wall from erosion and from all these pebbles right against the wall being washed away so in that in that case it's done its job now then did you see the next episode of the sandcastle building competition that's been going on this week just just down there where they've built that growing crossover ramp underwater at the moment you might have noticed that the guys were tipping rocks in a big hole <laughs> flattening them down and then they covered it all up and went away and left it <laughs> tell you it's all very curious <clears throat> it's not as curious as it might seem fortunately i had the presence of mind to cover a little bit of footage while the tide was out and while the sun was shining and while it was a lovely day so i'll drop it in when i've stopped waffling and they are building a base for the piling rig so that they can deliver a, a, a whacker, basically, to whack the great big poles in that are going to mark the ends of the groins, which I would say you can see at, at the Russell ski, but you can't because it's all misty. The piles of rocks that you can see sticking out of the water are not finished groins, they are just... They are just rocks that are being stored. So all this, what looks like sort of apparent devastation, is not finished. It's way from finished. So don't, don't panic. Don't panic, Mr. Manorin. Don't panic, Mr. Manorin. I've got all the information. If anybody wants to know anything, if anybody wants to pop in the venue on a Thursday morning, I'm there from 9 while 12. Might be a little bit late if I'm out and about taking videos. I'll drop the little bit in that I took the other day right here. So this is the pad that the piling rig is going to stand on and put the groin marker poles in. Because obviously when it's knocking, knocking a pole into the beach with quite incredible force, can't stand on wet, soggy sand to do it. It needs a firm base to stand on. So that's what that is, in case you were wondering. And I think, I think that's all I need to tell you this morning. So the groin marker poles are not going at the end of every groin, but they will go at the end of every so many. Can't remember off the top of my head how many how many there are, but they are to aid navigation so that people who are swimming or um, kite surfing or boating or anything like that know where the, know where the end of the grain field is and they don't end up coming a cropper. 
So I've got my brolly up long. Still raining. At the moment, you can't see anything over the Irish Sea. Somewhere out there, there's a wind farm with more to come, apparently. Apparently, they're building another great big wind farm right over there, and that's going to be cabled into Squire's Gate area. It's all very grey. It's actually quite warm. As I've, as I've been walking about, I've got warm. And it's a nice still sea. Lovely, these rocks, aren't they? I think that's it for today. I'm sure there's lots of other things to tell you, but keep watching, keep watching, and I'll keep updating you. As something different happens and something interesting happens, I'll keep updating you, I promise. So don't forget to subscribe. Make sure that you've hit the little bell for notifications, and don't forget to sign up for your Visit Felt Coast email newsletter. And until next time, from a drizzly, grey, umbrellaed Cleveland's, we will bid you a good day. Bye for now.